Hello everyone, Reza here. Today's video is around a very important topic that every app maker needs to know about. How to search and filter on large data sources in Power Apps. Here I will show you how to add a search box, add multiple filters, and all of this by taking care of delegation. So let's get started with the video. I have a Power App that is connected to a SharePoint list as a data source. The Power App has a gallery control that is connected to that SharePoint list. The list is called Work Progress Tracker and the list has over 2000 items in it with a wide variety of column types, choice, dates, person column and more. For the gallery control, for the items property, when I associated with that SharePoint list, which has over 2000 records, how much data does the gallery truly load in memory? Power Apps is designed keeping the mobile experience in mind. And there is a concept known as delegation in Power Apps, wherein Power Apps delegates the work of performing the queries to the underlying data source if that data source supports delegation, as well as if the queries that we execute against that data source support delegation. In that case, the query is performed server-side at the data source, and then the result is sent back to Power Apps in an optimized manner. Now here I have a label control that is showcasing the count of the number of items in my gallery control. And the gallery control is directly connected to my SharePoint list. Now this is also a query. The query here is get me all the data from my work progress tracker list, which has over 2000 items. If I was to play this app, you will observe that the gallery count right now is 100. What Power Apps does is because this query supports delegation, the query is performed in SharePoint, SharePoint returns the data back in an optimized manner in batches of 100. That's why we see 100. Now, what if I want the user to see more than 100 records? Well, for that, the user would have to scroll to the end of the gallery to see the next set of records. So here, if I was to scroll to the bottom of this gallery, what happened right now is there was another query performed against the data source, which is SharePoint, to fetch the next 100 records in memory. And as the user keeps scrolling at the bottom, it would keep loading the next 100 records in memory. So in reality, Power Apps is working with the entire data set, just that it is presenting that data set in an optimized manner. In fact, even in modern SharePoint, if you go to your modern list or libraries, here I have 2000 records, but SharePoint does not load all of that in memory. As I start scrolling to the bottom, you will note how it starts loading the next set of records. Now, since delegation is such an important concept, it is very important for us to follow the documentation Currently, there are only four data sources that support delegation. My demo here today is focused on SharePoint, but similar concepts can be applied to the other data sources as well. Now, if I head over to SharePoint here, we have a table that lists out the delegable functions and operations related to SharePoint. So when you're querying SharePoint from Power Apps, there are various factors that drive the concept of delegation. The type of my column makes a difference. The type of formula that I use makes a difference. Let's try and build a search box experience. So I've just used a button control here and there's something known as border radius. I'll give this a border radius of 20. So it creates this curved edges right here. And this button control, I'm going to make it view only. I will insert a text input control, position it right inside this button control, set the default text to empty. I'll set the border radius here to 10, so it creates that curved edge again. I will also go ahead and insert the search icon, position it right here, and as the user types, because I want to start typing from a few pixels from the left, for my search box, padding left, 40 pixels, let's preview, and here as the user type, we can see how the typing begins with the left padding of the pixels that we specified. I have renamed my text box control to txt search. Now in Power Apps, we have a function called search. 
So search my data source. Next, it's asking for the text. The text will come from my text box that I added, which is called txt search dot text. And I can specify the column I would like to search in. So I will say the title column. I can specify additional columns here as well. For now, let's just close this function. There are some key things to observe. I get this blue lines underneath that formula that says that there's a delegation warning. So this formula might not work with large data sets. On my screen itself, I get this hazard symbol, which gives that same delegation warning. And if we go right here to the app checker and go to formulas, we have a warning for delegation. Now in this case, if I was to preview the app, observe how the gallery count is showcasing as 500 directly. That means it's not undergone that optimized loading feature for us because it's just loaded 500 items in memory. I'm searching on the title column, which I've called task here. So let's say I search for data. This will apply that search criteria on my result set of 500 records only. It will not search on the entire data set. You will observe that each of the tasks, I have a number associated with it. So let's say I want to search for task number 600. So if I just search for 600, I do not get the result. But in my backend, I do have that data. Now, why don't I see that record? The reason is because of delegation. And Power Apps will load only 500 records in memory if the query is not delegable. Now, can we increase this number 500? We can go to settings, general, and right here is that limit. Now, by default, it is 500. The maximum you can set is 2000. You cannot go one beyond 2000. Bear in mind, increasing this limit to 2000 can also cause performance issues purely because Power Apps will have to load 2000 records in memory and then perform the query. I've seen folks use a workaround wherein they create collections and start loading data into a collection. What's the limit for a collection? There is no limit. You can load as much data as you want. But where is all that data loading? It is loading in memory in the app. I would recommend to stick to the base limit, which is 500. The search function is just not delegable with SharePoint. The search function itself is only supported for a certain set of column types. So in my data set, I have a choice column called progress. If I wanted to search in this column, if I type that column name here, it will give me an error because the only supported data type here is text. Now with SharePoint, there is another function called starts with, and this function is delegable with text columns and complex type columns. Here it says complex one. So if I head over to the first point here, the only complex type column that is supported is the person type column. And in there, the email address of the person and the display name of the person are delegated. Instead of using search, I will use the function filter, filter my data source. My logical test would be the starts with function. The name of my column here, I'll use the title column. And then what's the string that we need to check? It will come from my search box, which is txt search dot text. Now the formula is complete. I don't see that blue warning for delegation. And if we were to preview the app, you will observe that the gallery count now is back down to 100 because it's performing optimized query. Let's try and search for that same task 600. Now here I'm using starts with. So the text has to start with the text that I specify there in search. So here, let's try this task 600. Observe how it was able to perform the query against my entire data set. Let's try something else. Let's try task one. Here, once again, the gallery count is 100. I have all of these tasks that start with that text, but I have more than 100. So Power Apps does optimize loading once again. If I scroll to the bottom, it will get the next 100 set of data. Now let's try and also search on my person type column, which is assigned to. So for my same filter condition, I will add an or condition starts with my column name here is assigned to. Remember, this is only delegable with two properties of this column, display name and email. Let's try display name. And now what's my text once again coming from that search box.
Let me format text. Let's preview the app. Now I can search on both those columns together. So let's say I search for Reza. So here it is only showcasing all those tasks where assign to starts with the text Reza or the title starts with the text Reza. And once again, since there are many records that are assigned to Reza, optimized loading is being performed. But I want to also add filters so that the user can also refine the data set. I've added a couple of label controls and a drop down which will showcase priority column choices. For this control, I will set allow empty selection to true and the items would come from, since it's a choice column in SharePoint, choices of my data source dot priority. So this should load all those choices for priority. And I have done the same thing for my status choice column as well. I have done multiple videos on filtering galleries. The links to those is in the description for this video. So do check it out. So back to my filter condition, I will put brackets around my starts with formulas, add an ampersand, which is my and condition. Once again, in brackets, let's put the first condition priority dot value. It's a choice column is equal to the drop down control on my screen, which is the filter dot selected dot value or if that drop down control is empty. This is important to add because in case that is empty, I want to get all the records. So by using an or condition, if it's empty, this evaluates to true, true or anything is true. So it will get all the data. And I will add the same and condition, but this time for my other column, which is my status or my progress column. Let's go ahead and preview the app. So show me all the items from my data source, which are assigned to Reza priority is high. Status is completed. It's adding all of those filters against my entire data set of more than 2000 records. And that is purely because all my queries here that I'm performing against my data source support delegation. But I would like to provide searching capabilities to the users so that they can search in any of the columns inside my SharePoint list. Search is not delegable. So the idea here is to provide good filters to the user so that they can get the data set in the gallery within delegable limits. The delegation limit of my app is currently set to 500. Now I'm going to use that number, which is 500 and create a search experience. On the on start function of the app, I will set a variable. I will call this var delegation limit and I'm setting this to 500. Now make sure that this number matches the number that you have right here. And since I'm in the edit mode of the app, I have to ensure that I right click the app object and run on start so that this variable has a value, which in this case is 500. For my filter query, I will go ahead and remove starts with. So I only have the filters. Now for these controls that I've added here can also add a reset button. And when the user selects this button, we will go ahead and reset my drop down controls and also my search box. So here, if I was to preview the app, click reset, all the controls are cleared. Next, I will insert a slider control and this control we are going to hide from the user on the screen. So the user never sees this. The max value for this slider control, we will set it to that variable delegation limit. And the default value count rows of our gallery control dot all items. So if I was to preview the app, observe the value shows up here as 100. My total delegation limit, of course, is 500. And if the gallery was to load more data in memory, you can see how that slider control automatically moves ahead. Now, whenever this slider control changes, we will set a variable which would be self dot value. Items property of our gallery control. Let's go ahead and write the following formula. If var data count is less than our delegation limit variable, then I'm applying my standard filter criteria. Now to this, I would also like to apply searching capabilities. Search is not delegable and it only supports text columns. 
but I want to add additional column type. So instead of using search, there's another function called in. In is also not delegable, but it can support other column types. Now this filter criteria here is definitely delegable. We will apply another filter on top of this. And this is where we will add that in criteria. Search box control dot text in my title column. Or is this in my ID column, let's say. Or is this in my choice column dot value. Or my person type column dot display name and so and so forth. So as many columns I want to search in and in actually performs a full search. For the else condition here, I'll just go and apply the original filter criteria, which was the one without the searching experience. The logic here basically implies that if the number of records that we have currently in our gallery, if that is less than the delegation limit, that definitely means that all that data is now in Power Apps in memory. So if I was to search on that data, search would give me accurate results. But that is only possible if that result set is less than that delegation limit. So the key here is to provide good filters or refiners to our users so that they can first apply filters to get the data set less than the delegation limit and then we can add search. Now we are getting a delegation warning. So will the gallery perform a correct delegable query because it's throwing a delegation warning? Well, it partially does support delegation. How? This filter condition has no delegation issues. And Power Apps, when you have multiple unnested formulas, it begins from the inside functions and then starts going to the outer functions. So because this query is delegable, this will work with a large data set. And once that result is returned is where it will then try and perform this filter condition on it. So that's the concept that we are banking on here. And all of our search controls here, I'll just go ahead and group them. For the visible property, we will set it as follows. Our var data count variable, if this is less than our variable of the delegation limit. Now let's preview the app and check this out in action. Right now, my gallery has 500 records. Why? Because the entire query is not delegable. So it's loading 500 records in memory. Once the user starts scrolling down to the last item, it will not load more than 500 items. And you would not want your user to go down scrolling all the way to 500 items and so and so forth. You would want to provide good filters or refiners, which I have tried to provide right here. So let's say I'm interested in all the work tasks that have priority critical. So I apply that first filter. Now observe what happened. The moment I applied that filter, the gallery count is 259. It's less than the delegable limit. That means guaranteed this query has given me all my data. Why? Because the inside query or that filter condition that I performed supports delegation. So if I actually scroll down, you will notice it's picking tasks that are in the numbers 2000. Because this number is less than my delegation limit, I'm also opening up searching capabilities. So let's say I remember that my task had the number 20 somewhere in it. So now if I search for 20, this is actually searching in all the tasks that have that number 20 in either the ID. In this case, ID has the number 20. In the task, here is number 20. Now let's try and reset this. Let's try this once again. Show me everything where the priority is medium. Now observe with medium priority, I'm getting 500 records. That's my delegation limit of my app. So if you notice the search feature is not yet opened, that's because there could be more records in my data set, which Power Apps has not loaded. So I've provided additional filters and you can provide more filters here. So users can get to a more refined data set. If I pick not started, there are only 16 records in my entire data set with this combination. The search box has opened and I can search for the text against any of my columns in that limited data set. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.